Now, to reassemble the SSR Formar 2 gearbox, we go in reverse order and we start with the cylinder set. I'm just going to insert the cylinder head into the cylinder. And just for storing purposes, I'm going to put the piston on. The nozzle can go back on. The tappet plate, which actually engages with the nozzle as such, you can see there is a little groove. Put a spring back on and set aside. We now take the gearbox and start with the ETU first. First place the ETU. Also make sure, actually, as you can see, there is a little bit of grease over here. Make sure there is no grease on the sensitive components like the micro switches from one side or the other. It should not be a problem if grease is on top of it, but you can always just like wipe it off. And as, as long as, and if you find any grease on the micro switches, then make sure to use some degreaser or some uh, alcohol to actually completely remove it to prevent any, any sort of interference in the uh, ETU's operation. Now we install the board, we press it down. We worry about the cables later, so the cables can stay as such for now. Then we put that little transparent spacer, that is very important, so don't forget that. And if you happen to lose it or, or anything like that, any sort of non-conductive spacer will, will do. This doesn't need a lot of force, just slightly tug it so that it doesn't move anywhere and you should be good to, good to go. Now we start guiding the wires into their guides. The, the wires will generally have a little bit of memory, so they will prefer to go in one certain way. And if, and if you see that they're actually fighting you, then it means it's probably not the way that it uh, developed the memory. So, for this thing I do need something just to make sure that it's all the way down, like so. And everything is nice in its, in its place right now. Good, we continue with the gears, starting off with the spur gear. Make sure it spins freely. Then we can actually put the anti-reverse latch back in place. I like to always put the spring first, then just catch it with my finger like that. And make sure it's in its hole and it can move freely. Then the bevel gear goes in. I do need to pre-tension this a little bit so that the bevel gear can go freely. Make sure everything spins nicely and then tension it so that this doesn't pop out on its own. Now the sector gear. The sector gear position, it is to make your life easier while assembling it. I recommend this position for like completely putting it in there and, and just leaving it as such. So with the delayer onto the right side. That's the, the easiest way to, to reassemble this without making your life hard. Next, we can actually add the trigger, which like I said before, can go very, very easily. Like the only thing that I need to do is just tension this spring onto the gearbox face and just then pop it into place. And that's it. It's not gonna pop up on its own. It can actually move freely. Then we just place the whole entire cylinder assembly on top of it, making sure that the cylinder itself slots into place. For example, if it's not, I'm just going to demonstrate it now. If the cylinder head is too far forward, you're not going to be able to, you, you, you're not going to be able to feel that the, the cylinder is in there. You can see it actually moves. It's not really, it doesn't want to, it doesn't feel like it's all the way in. Or um, alternatively, if it's, if it's a little bit out, then it's going to slot into place here, but you can see the cylinder is still like canted upwards and it doesn't really want to go into place. So from here, you just like press it until you feel it click in place and actually like sits all the way in. This is to avoid having to repeat like or like fiddle with when you put the, uh, the other gearbox half on top of it. Now that everything is in place, we check if the piston is moving freely, which it does. The nozzle is moving freely, which it does. The only other thing now that we need to do is to tension the spring itself. As you saw, I just added it there. And now, like, don't let this fly off because it can actually go up a little bit and you can see it actually wants to remove my uh, shim from the, from the uh, gear. So in order to prevent this, 
the easiest way is to use something long and thin, maybe even like the uh, spring removal tool that you have in the package. And by inserting it from where the spring would go, just on top of the tappet plate, you can actually keep it tension down so that it doesn't like wanna pop out. And that is essentially the only part that can make it a bit more difficult to install the gearbox back together. And as I said that, there is this basic little cable which wants to pop out. But now that it stays in and it's in its groove, we can then take the upper part, align it until we're roughly in this position. And from here, we can actually remove that tool. We don't need it anymore because now it's not gonna pop out anywhere. And from here, just wiggle it around and see now what doesn't align. What, when looking through these holes, you can actually see what is not aligned. These three uh, gears appear to be aligned, but the anti-reverse, you can actually see that it's not there. So for this, I just go in and just like slightly just press on it until it goes into the middle and now there. I felt it, the gearbox going all the way in. And from here you, you can, you will be able to verify if there is a nice seam all the way around while holding it together, then it means everything seated correctly. So we can proceed putting uh, the screws in and starting to start tighten, tightening them. Like I said before, be mindful of these two screws which have the sticky glue on top of them, on them. Here, using a two millimeter hex, it doesn't matter the order. So we'll just start from, from top. Good. When all of the screws are inside, you can actually do a bit of a tug on all of them. You don't need to do you, to use excessive force. There is no benefit in over torquing these, as long as they are fully in. That's quite important. Good. From here, I purposely left out the selector plate to show you that it can actually be installed even after the fact quite easily. I just rotate it, and from here, I just press it into the groove. And that's it, make sure that it moves. And there you have it. There is nothing that prevents that from getting reassembled. Now we can actually move on to reinstalling the gearbox in the lower receiver and reinstalling the lower receiver itself.